Hi everybody, so in this video, it's a bit inside baseball. What I'm gonna be trying to address is the problem that Daisy models on console and PC have when a new update comes along um, and all those lovely XML files that you've been modding for the past few months or and or JSON files are out of date. And Daisy throws in these new items, you know, like a make a new gun or a new helmet or, you know, an alarm clock or something like that. And you're like, oh gosh, I've spent all this time modding my XML so that the players on my server have the experience I want them to have. And now I've got these new files. So I'm going to talk about techniques that you can use to update your modded files so they include all of the, the new changes that Daisy have brought in. Now, in order to do this, what you'll want to have is you want to have read, obviously, the update for whatever update it is. We're currently on update 1.16. And specifically, you'll have wanted to go through the patch notes as well for that update, because that will give you some clues about um, what's changed as well. So that, that's always important to have. Also, it's very important, I'll put a link to this in the description below the video, it's always important to have a copy of the old daisy central economy files so the old xmls and the old json files and the old config files you always want to have a copy of those so every time there's a new update wait a few days and make sure you download to your computer um the 1.5 files or the 1.6 files or the 1.7 files and all you do is you just go to get uh, daisy's github repository and you download the zip and that will give you livonia it will give you churnerus it'll give you everything and you, you can download those and you have those on your computer and hang on to those you at least want the current ones and you want to have the last ones as well because we're going to use those as well um, it's also very very important to have things like um, an XML validator in your uh, shortcut so you can check your files when you've been messing around with them and obviously a JSON validator as well so you can check your JSON files you're also going to need notepad plus plus very powerful um, free text editor this and you're going to want to have the notepad plus plus compare plugin again i'll put links to all of this in the description below the video because the technique we're going to use is we're going to compare um, the old vanilla files with the new vanilla files and we're going to look for the changes and then we're going to insert those changes into our modded files so the final piece of the puzzle is to make sure that you've got a copy of all of your modded files as well in the same place um, when you start doing things like this it kind of really becomes apparent that if you can keep your modded files in a in a um, in a nice order but also if you can limit the number of modded files you have to deliver the mods you want then that, that can really help because that makes this process a lot lot easier now obviously what you could do is you could just download the um, vanilla files from Bohemia Interactive and just start from scratch but you know who really <laughs> wants to do that so what I've got here on my computer in this folder here I've got the daisy 115 vanilla files let's just go up so you can see them properly so there we go so they these are all the daisy 115 vanilla files and in this folder i've got all the daisy 116 vanilla files so they're all ready to go and in this folder i've got my modded files that were for 115 so they're all in the same place so i know which files i've got to work on now remember all the other files that you haven't modded they're just going to go vanilla aren't they so you can just use the the file from Bohemia interactive so if you're on console for example what you can do is when the when the uh, update goes live you can just hit go to the settings hit reset xmls to default um, make sure you've um, downloaded things like the um, um, cfg gameplay.json if you haven't got that already and and your settings reset the xmls to vanilla and then upload your files on top of it do a restart you know and those changes will will take effect so once we've got these kind of three folders ready what you need to do is you just need to open up the files in notepad plus plus so there's types so that's types 115 so if we go here and we go in and we open up types 116 edit with notepad plus plus it puts them next to each other like this so there's types there's types so these are the two different types and then all you need to do is as long as you've installed the compare plugin you just go to plugins compare click compare now types is a pretty big file so it's going to take it a couple of minutes to do it 
And then what we see is on the left hand side, this is the um, new file, on the right hand side, this is the old one. And on the uh, right, right here on the far right hand side, we've got these color bars. And these show us where the changes are. So, and it, the, the good thing about doing it this way, where you're comparing vanilla files, is that the order of the t different types in that particular file, or the different events, are going to be fairly similar. They're just going to be extra bits or less bits. Whereas if you compare a new vanilla file, say a 116 file, with your 115 modded files straight away, if you've been messing around with them and changing the order of things, it might not be quite obvious where the changes are. So straight away, we can see the first difference in this particular case between 115 vanilla, which is here, and uh, 116 vanilla, which is here, is the addition of the alarm clock blue, and alarm clock green, and the alarm clock red. Um, and you can see the really cool way that Notepad++ makes a space on that. And wherever there's colors here, there'll be some sort of change, whether that be an addition or a change or an edit. So we now know that in our modded types.xml file, we need to add all of this. So it's a simple case of just opening up our modded types file, edit with Notepad++, and then that will then open up, um, where does it open up? There. And then we can know, we can have a look here, and we can go, okay, so the change is below airborne mask. So if we go to my, in fact, I'll probably prefer to have it there, I think. So if we just do a control F now and type in airborne, there we go. So now, so there's the airborne mask. So we can just go to here. I can just, and there, as the, so there's the airborne mask entry. So now I can just copy all of this, all the alarm clock stuff. I have to copy that, copy that. Put an enter there, paste that in, and that is now done. And then what I would do is I would then save that, and then I would probably close it. Um, because one of the problems that can happen is it can get very complicated with all these different different types of XML. So before you do any editing or anything, just make sure you look which window you've got active and what folder you're working on. So 115 vanilla, or we've got um, 116 vanilla over here. Oop. There we go. One one um, one five. Sorry, one one five vanilla there. One one six vanilla over here, and then my original types file there. In fact, what I'd probably do is I'll close that. Now I'm not going to save it because because um, I'm doing something else with these files. So then what we can do? We can just scroll down, and the types is quite. So there's another example here. So so in this particular example, what we can see is that from one one five, which is on the right, and one one six, actually the game has reduced the number of uh, rubber slug ammo boxes that spawn in the world from 20 to 16. So this is something, to be honest, I would just ignore things like that and I wouldn't worry about it. So we can scroll down. Now this will take a while. There we go. So ammo box 762 has gone from 20 to 18. Does it really matter? Uh, I, I don't think so. I wouldn't waste time. So, uh, so there we've got um, 12 gauge rubber slugs goes from 80 to 40. Um, the minimum has changed. Do we really need to change it? I don't think so. You know, you're after the bigger things, really. So these are all just small changes. And all you do is you scroll down, or you can you can drag the color bar here. And so there we go. So for some reason, they've changed bandage. Now, so they've put bandage in the game file. Now, you'll notice things like this, where there's actually a nominal of zero for bandage. So you've got to think, well, why is that? Because actually, you know, the thing that's in the game is the bandage dressing. But with something like that, what you'll want to do is you will want to just copy that across to your new file um, and pop it in. But don't, if it's an unusual thing like that where it's nominal is zero, don't change that. Leave it as it is unless you know for sure that this is something that will spawn in. So here we go. So we've got a new, uh, so so bandana mask black pattern. Again, there's no none zero bandana mask zero pattern. So what it could be with these is that they're putting these into the XML files, but they don't actually work yet. Um, so watch out for stuff like that. Um, we can see here that the bandana black pattern, yeah, they've taken away the tier values. Let's scroll down further. So these are all just small changes. Here we go. So this is interesting here. So what you can see is the cattle prod there has come is um, been removed from the files. 
Now this, yeah, this is interesting because what's happening here is that they're taking th things out that don't really work properly. They're cleaning up the XMLs. So basically using this compare method by comparing the old files with the new files and then opening up your modded file to insert the bits that have changed or insert the changes, you just slowly work through all of your um, files um, until you get to the point when you've done them all and th at that point that is when you then go to your JSON validator or your XML validator check the files validate adjust for any errors you might have made by cutting it and pasting in the wrong place and then your files will be ready to go um, and that's basically how I do it with uh, with my github repositories because I've done updates for the last oh, quite a few updates for my hunting fishing and stealth XML uh, codes and every time that's the way I do it I compare the old vanilla files with the new vanilla files then any changes I then insert into my modded XML files and then I rely on the new vanilla files for the um, bits that I'm not modding to put on my server as well so there we go hopefully you find that me method useful um, hopefully it hasn't been too complicated um, and uh, if you've got a better method for doing this by all means you know let me know but I find this quite reliable and does seem to work um, whenever I go to do it. Right, that's enough from me. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you again soon.